Hello and welcome back to Ux Studio. This episode is going to cover most of the deluxe class figures from the Transformers 2007 movie. I have 38 figures in total, and each of them will be given a brief introduction, assuming that you have little knowledge of the Transformers or its figures. So before getting started, just for your information, the deluxe class refers to those figures that go about 6 inches or 15 centimeters tall in robot mode. And will go in order of the 11 waves of the normal retail figures and then some store exclusive ones. The very first wave was called Movie Preview Line and there were only two figures. The reason why they are called Movie Preview Line is because they came out one or two months earlier than the actual release of the movie. And as you can probably see, they both transform into something called Entry Mode, which I think looks like some type of meteorite or an asteroid. Although we saw little of the protoform type in the actual movie, but I think they are pretty well-made figures. And the Wave 2 is actually the biggest one, including 6 figures. So the first one I'm going to introduce is Barricade. He had absolutely beautiful police car mode, and he left me a long-lasting impression when he was interrogating Sam with Wiki. Although the proportion of the robot mode was somewhat disappointing to me, the transformation was pretty neat, and most importantly, it included Frenzy, fun tricky guy. And the next figure is of course gonna be Bumblebee, who made some sense of rivalry with Barricade. And this figure has the alt mode of the classic Camaro. Turning around, you'll see the robot mode, which I believe generates too much of toy-ish feeling. But I think the alt mode looks great. So the name of the friendly guys was Autobot, whereas the bad guy team was called Decepticon. Jazz was one of the Autobots who had very stylish move then language. The mines got a partial repaint, so it would be different from the normal one. And this is the robot mode of Jazz. I think he was one of the most disproportionate figure from the line, but nevertheless, it was one of the most popular figure because the character was so cool. This is Brawl, who was one of the Decepticons, the bad guys. He transforms into this menacing tank, and the robot mode was a bit chunkier than it should have been, but it was fairly acceptable. And the next is Scorponok, who is a character that looks and acts like a scorpion. I believe the slow-mo scene where Scorponok was chasing the US Army soldiers was one of the most impressive scenes of the movie. Although the robot mode doesn't mean too much because we never saw him in his robot mode, but the scorpion mode is in great quality, contrary to many people's expectations. And last but not least, we have Wreckage, who is another cool-looking Decepticon. He didn't actually appear in the movie, but he was a Stone Cold soldier in the movie comics. For your information, there was something called movie comics that went pretty much simultaneously with the movies, and it contained vastly more stories than the live-action film did. So for the rest of this video, there will be many characters who appeared only in the movie comics, but not in the movie, and I'm going to call that kind of characters non-movie characters for convenience. So Wreckage had some type of cool-looking military vehicle as his alt mode, but his robot mode was even cooler, especially with his clear red blades at his both hands. The third wave had two figures, and one of them was Bonecrusher. He had a sleek but terrifying alt mode, which was a mind-protected vehicle. I believe both his robot mode and alt mode have really nice screen accuracy, so personally thinking, it would have been the best figure of the line only if it had come out in a bigger size class. The other figure of the third wave is Swindle. He's another non-movie guy, but appeared many times in the movie comics, plus the Transformers video game. 
There were three drone teams and Swindle was one of them who shared body type of standard car or sedan. But I guess as he didn't have the coolest appearance in the world, the figure was not very popular. There are three figures in the fourth wave. RC is another non-movie character. She's unique in that she's a female and has an alt mode of a motorcycle. In terms of the robot mode, I think she has the most stylish hairdo. The figure has a neat transformation and a pretty good proportion. This Mumblebee has an alt mode of a newer Camaro, which came out pretty nice as a figure. I should have mentioned it earlier, is the gimmick called Automorph Technology. It's a gimmick that some parts of the figure is transformed by transforming other parts, but you don't see those gimmicks anymore nowadays. Speaking of the robot mode, it was not the best, but not the worst either. It was just Bumblebee. Dreadwing is a non-movie guy who was the leader of another team of drones, this time being a jet fighter type. He was a very ambitious character, trying to take control over the Decepticons. Although it's really cartoon accurate, the figure has a weird proportion. However, for some reason, I really do enjoy this mold. The first one I'm going to introduce is the final battle of Jazz. This is simply a battle damage version of Jazz, packaged in robot mode to highlight some damages. The figure also came with a different weapon than the previous normal version. However, it's quite unfortunate to have little damage on the alt mode, but I do admit that the battle damage was not so bad. If you've seen the movie, you'd probably remember the scene where Michaela drove a tow truck to help Bumblebee shoot some Decepticons. The tow truck was given life, and that is long arm, but we never saw his robot mode in the movie. Actually, the truck mode of the figure is somewhat different than that of the actual movie. I like the way it transforms and the weapons, and an absolutely gorgeous head sculpt. Payload is also a non-movie guy, and he is a leader of the drone team of a truck type. I like how the drones have this camera lens looking face. He has a gimmick of capturing claw, but it's too gigantic, and it takes up so much space, which is a huge minus as a figure. Now it's the 6th wave, and there are only 2 figures for this wave. Recon Barricade is a direct repaint of the previous Barricade figure. We never saw this color scheme in the movie, and the color scheme itself is not necessarily attractive, making this figure less appealing. Dropkick was a non-movie guy, but he's got a big super cool Decepticon logo on top of his truck mode. He was introduced as a drone in the games, which was not the case for the movie comics. The robot mode has an absolutely amazing and unique design, and I personally like the chicken leg mold very much. Wave 7 to 9 are called the Allspark Power Waves. Allspark is a cube looking relic of unknown origin, which generates life powers to Transformers. So, some of the Allspark Power Waves are the new Transformers created by Allspark Power. One feature of these Allspark Power figures is that they all have bright sky blue paint apps, which I really do not like. In the seventh wave, there were three figures. First, it's Autobot Camshaft. He was released in December 2007, whereas the other ones were released in January 2008. Camshaft is a repaint of Swindle, but in this time, having more gray color scheme. In the movie comics, he was a loyal Autobot soldier, but he had to face a brutal fate by a Decepticon. The robot mode looked a lot cooler in the movie comics, but the figure itself did not represent it very well. Cliffjumper is a repaint of his friend Bumblebee, who did share pretty much the same body structure. In the movie comics, they were guarding the relic Allspark. It would have been a lot nicer if there was anything that could differentiate him with Bumblebee other than just different color. 
Landmine's vehicle is some kind of military vehicle, which actually made some appearances in the movie. But we never saw his robot mode in the film. In the movie comics, he was a drone character created by Sector 7, which is a secret US division that deals with the Transformers. Sector 7 exchanged some information with Wreckage, and thus they created Landmine with the power of Allspark. I really like this figure since the transformation is fun and he looks very realistic. There was a wave between wave 7 and 8, and it only had one figure, which was Stockade. Stockade transforms into Cadillac Escalade SUV, which was one of the vehicles used by Sector 7. However, he was not created by Sector 7 like Landmine was, but he played his role way back from Cybertron, the home planet of the Transformers. He has a very gorilla-like robot mode, and as far as I can recall, I really enjoyed his simple yet clean transformation. There were two figures in the 8th wave. Overcast is a member of the drone team led by Dreadwing, so they share the same body type. Nevertheless, Overcast landed on Japan, so he took Japanese jet fighter as his ult mode. So direct use of the Dreadwing mode for Overcast is technically an error. Though he might not look so attractive at the first glance, I really like this figure because of the cool color scheme and gorgeous details. The other figure of the wave was Jungle Bone Crusher, which was obviously repaint of the original Bone Crusher. I do not quite understand the story of him, since we saw Optimus killing Bone Crusher in the movie. But it says that he survived and ran away to some jungle areas in South America, so he took this kind of color scheme. Since this figure was not very convincing, it was merely a substitution for the original Bone Crusher for those guys who didn't get the original one. Stealth Bumblebee is not even a different character, but just a repaint of the previous Bumblebee, this time being a black color scheme. However, there was major difference between the two. The original one had a normal head sculpt, whereas the Stealth Bumblebee has a battle mask version. So it was quite worth picking up for the Bumblebee fans. Salvage is a repaint of Dropkick, now having red as his primary color. As far as I understand, Salvage was brought to life by Allspark at a similar time with Longarm and brought to Sector 7 and later became an Autobot. Personally, I didn't like the color of him, but since Dropkick was a pretty rare figure, Salvage was a nice substitution for him. It would've been much better if it didn't have the Allspark blue paint apps. Now the 10th wave, which is the last wave, was Premium Series. It had three figures of the most popular characters, I believe. They were Bumblebee, Jazz, and Barricade. There's not much to say except that they were basically given some better paint jobs and Bumblebee is given a battle mask version of head sculpt. So those were the 29 figures from the wave 1 to 10. There were many target exclusive deluxe class figures, but as far as I know, this is the only one that has the same packaging style to the normal retail version. This figure is Jazz in the G1 style, which looks something like this image. G1 refers to Generation 1, which was the very first TV cartoon show of the Transformers that started in 1984. A lot of people missed Transformers in G1 style, so this item was there to fulfill the need. It was an interesting figure because it had Michael Bay style Transformers body type and G1 color scheme. There were also Walmart exclusive figures, and they all appeared only in the movie comics. And they were all reuse of figures 
from the previous Transformers series. Big Daddy was a repaint of Downshift from the Cybertron line. He was more like a background actor and didn't really do much in the movie comics. His robot mode was rough and chunky, which I was not a big fan of. But I have to say the paint job on his vehicle mode is absolutely beautiful. Dive Bomb was a repaint of Cybertron Skywarp. It's a fun fact that he has some problems with his inside, so he has a very bad smell that others cannot really take. I believe this figure is by far the worst figure in the video, because it has awful mold. The arms do not tap into any place, and the legs and feet are so tiny that it makes him very disproportionate, and the color scheme is also very miserable. Grindcore is a repaint of Guard Shell from the Galaxy Force line. He was a member of the science division of Cybertron, led by Optimus, and he was digging up ancient relic in the planet. And the figure has a very nice construction vehicle as his ult mode, but the robot mode was too bulky to represent the movie comics appearance. Jolt was a repaint of Cybertron crosswise. His name is Jolt, but he was introduced as Dead End in the movie comics and showed some great car chasing scenes. The vehicle mode looks absolutely cool with a transparent flame on the back of him, but the robot mode leaves a lot to be desired, having a too simple structure. Breakaway is a repaint of Cybertron Hotshot. He was one of the science division, just like Grindcore was. For your information, there's another breakaway in the later series, but they are different characters. His alt mode has some impressive clear red plastic parts. And the robot mode reminds me some type of policeman, which is pretty cool. Crankcase is a repaint of Cybertron Red Alert. Crankcase followed orders from Megatron back in Cybertron. His alt mode is a very nice emergency vehicle, but the robot mode looks somewhat too fat compared to how he appeared in the movie comics. Fracture is a repaint of Classic's Mirage. She's a female character, and she was supposed to be another character called Crasher in GoBot series. But I guess the royalty issue did not go very well, so it came out in a similar name, which was Fracture. She has an awesome F1 race car alt mode, and in the movie comics, she was driving mad on Earth. And the robot mode also looks very cool, since the original mold was still great. There are also many other limited versions, and I have one of them, which is Battle Damage RC. This was originally released as an Asia exclusive, but later it was retailed in the US. The product shot is the same as the original one, but actually she's got lots of Battle Damage applied. So we have gone through 38 deluxe figures in total. There might be some false information, so correct me if I was wrong. Which one is your favorite? Is there anything else you want to share about the figures? Please let me know by leaving some comments. So I hope this episode was fun and helpful, and if you liked this video, please hit the like button and get subscribed. Thanks for watching.